Hey everybody. Okay, so this is the behind the scenes. This is how I put on all my wigs. It's evolved over time. Um, so I'm going to show you where I part, how I part it. I also have some photos I'll put in um, from another snippet um, that you'll see in this video. It's kind of a mishmash. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to need like a couple of these clips. Right now I only have two, but usually I have a whole bunch sitting around. You can get them at any local beauty supply store. Um, and you're going to use this to kind of secure your hair out the way as you're clipping. You're going to need a comb. <laughs> you're going to need a comb or two. I have two. Um, you may or may not need a brush. Um, for me, because the, my hair is curly underneath, I try not to brush it because then it gets super, super like floof, fluffy and ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> sorry guys, my hair is like shedding because this is just exactly what you do. Very natural. Yeah. Anyways, I have a spray bottle full of water. Um, there's no product in here, there's no conditioner, no oils, nothing, just straight up water. Um, I have my oil, so I always have some sort of oil that I put on my hair while it's being um, idle. Um, right now I'm using the Hair Polisher Color Treated and Chemically Damaged Hair Extra Strength. Um, I have had experienced some heat damage in the past due to not using a heat protectant and over... Um, processing in here um, with a flyer. So I'm trying to stay away from that. <laughs> so I'm using a heat protector that is nowhere to be found right now, but I'll let you guys know what that is. I'm also using argon oil, leave-in curl detangler and conditioner. Love, love, love the stuff. It smells amazing and it's really good. It gives your hair a little bit of a hold um, to, to lock in kind of the moisture. Um, <clears throat> and then I use my Hair polisher, carrot group serum, triple strength, because I am actually in the process of trying to grow my hair out a little bit more. Um, I want it to be just a little bit longer than it is right now. Um, so yeah, working on that. So what I'm going to do right now, my hair is pretty, it's damp, it's not super, super dry. It's, it's like, I would say like 80% dry. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to add, I can get in there a little bit, the Carrot serum, and I'm gonna put that really just in my roots because that's really what matters. It doesn't grow from the end, you know. Um, put that in the roots. Now, when I'm doing a style that um, requires, or sorry, when I'm putting on a wig that requires some kind of heat, so I have two types of wigs: I have a curly wig, and I have um, two um, straight wigs. I'll show you the guy, show you the wigs in a second. But um, if I'm going to just do, um, if I'm going to use my straight wig, I'm not going to put um, the same oils on the rest of the hair that I'm leaving hidden. Um, the reason for that is because if you put too much product on your hair, it'll weigh it down. The wigs are a different kind of texture from mine. Um, they're like more of an Indian kind of silky, um, very flowy kind of texture and I don't want to put too much product because then it'll weigh my hair down but I do want to put enough product where my hair doesn't need um, need to go over it another time in a couple days and things like that. Usually when I'm doing my hair in a straight style I don't have to go over it again because um, I make sure once I do it I do it once and that's it. Um, yeah so let's get the hair separated. So you want to separate your hair um, for a more natural look, I prefer this look. Um, there's different ways of doing it. There's ways of doing it where you can leave the back out, your perimeter, which is all around your edges out. I don't usually do it like that. If I put up my wigs, it's usually like a half up style and the back is out. And if I put it up, I usually have some sort of like um, bandana or something, you know, concealing that part. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so obviously, I didn't think this through because I don't have a mirror to see what I'm doing. Alright, now I have a mirror. Okay, so I'm gonna make some room for it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to part here, here, 
and then I'm going to do a big U here, which I'll show you guys, but that's just basically what I'm doing right now. So what I do is I start with the U, so the part that's here, that's what makes a wig a U part wig because there's leave out and the leave out is usually in the shape of a U so that we can have some um, leave out in every part. Now the U can be in different places. The U can be here, it can be here, um, it can be, I mean, probably not, probably won't do that, but it can be really, really low so you can have a nice deep um, side part, whatever you like. It's totally up to you. Most of my wigs I usually wear them um, it was a middle part, just easier. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do recording. This is where the clips come in. Super duper handy because you can clip your hair away as you make the part so that way you're not bombarded by a whole bunch of hair while you're trying to put. Now, when you're making the U, you want to give it, I would say, at least, at least two inches um, in width. Wise, um, how deep you go is it's it's really up to you. Some people like a deep, you know, middle part. Some people like it a little bit shorter, but I would definitely suggest it to be um, pretty wide because you want a lot of coverage. If you have thinner hair, you probably want to make it a little bit wider because you want your hair to cover the tracks that are on the wig. Um, so this is going to be my part thus far, and what I do is I just part it all the way down to the front, either side, and then you want to get that out the way. Okay, so this is what you want to have. Okay, I'm secure this part. But basically you want this U. Mine is super, super chunky because I like a lot of coverage. I like to be able to um, make sure that there's no track whatsoever showing. That's real. Mm -mm, that's not cute. So you're going to secure this down and out the way. So you have your U. Now you want the sides. You want the sides so that way if you put your hair back a little bit, you know, not everybody knows your business. So <clears throat> this is the part that I learned that worked the most. When you're wearing the wig, you're gonna have two clips. You're gonna have a clip here, clip here, and usually a clip here. You're also gonna have a clip that's gonna face this way. So it's a clip here and a clip here. If I'm looking to, I'm looking at my right, your left, so to see what I'm actually doing, because you know I can't see. Um, and then you're gonna have a clip here. Yeah, it depends. You could be kind of almost towards your ears because you want some cover so you're not flapping your ear, you know, your wig's not flapping off your ears. Um, <clears throat> but so this part that you have right here, you want it, it's going to be a weird configuration. This is how I do it personally. So I part off just a little bit here and then I go a little bit deeper right before the ears, but this part is a little bit deeper so you're gonna start off really really close to your forehead and then you're gonna widen up the part the reason why you do that is when you clip the hair down a lot of the time especially with straight styles you're wearing it towards your face or you're wearing it down on your face and when you clip it far you're gonna have to leave out more hair and then the hair isn't gonna lay properly it's gonna be um, I guess you can say kind of thin-ish. So, um, okay. So, I'm gonna secure this part. Secure that part, and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So, again, you're gonna come a close to the scalp, but not too close, because you want some coverage. Um, the tracks of the wig, and I'll show you again, 
um, <clears throat> are going to be laying this way. They sometimes, depending on the wig, if you want it really in your face, then it comes at a slanted, more slanted, so it'll come down. So you won't have to worry about too much coverage when you come up here. But once you do that part there, you want to come out a little bit more, but leave it before your ears. So that looks a little chunky. There we go. And secure this. Now this is the part that you're not going to coat with any kind of um, leave-in conditioner. It's strictly heat protecting. So for the next thing here, I have just a little bit. I know it's starting to get a little dry. Now if you have straight here, you really don't have to try as hard. <laughs> but with curly hair, it does take a little bit more work. Um, with straight hair, you I would suggest just doing your normal, you know, moisturizing, etc. Um, and then you know we'll secure it our way. Um, if you know how to if you know how to braid corn roll, yeah, I would definitely suggest that. Um, I try not to get too much of the moisturizer or the the, the serum on my scalp because my scalp tends to itch if I have too much product build up but you want to get in there I'm not afraid to use products some people are like use a key size of product I'm not afraid to use products the reason being is because I have a hair and my hair can get real hungry when it wants product so I'm gonna put it in some people you know section their hair into fours when they do this because they want a more even coat totally up to you personally good job the way I'm doing it now. Um, get in there. Alright, so now you have your oil or silk base kind of product. Then the leave-in conditioner. I'm going to put a decent size amount because you want you want that semi-hold. With the conditioners I learned, for me at least, gives me a hold but it's not like a gel. It's more like a just keeps it together. See how much I'm using? I don't know if you can see it, but it's quite a bit. And what I do is start from the top, put a little bit on your hand, and then rub it around. So you don't just take the whole thing and block because then you're not going to be able to move it. Get the end, and as you get closer, you separate it and put it all over your hair. Jesus. Just like cleavage all over the world today. Okay. So, now that we have everything coated, we're ready to start braiding. I personally don't know how to curl roll that well, and I've done it in the past, and usually I wear my wigs at least three days to a week. Um, so I like to have something that's a little bit more secure. What happens with the corn rolls, they seem to get unraveled and then it gets poofy and it feels weird. I don't know if you don't want it. If you know how to corn roll, you're more than welcome to corn roll um, it back. Um, I would suggest doing more than just two braids or one braid, depending on how the thickness of your hair. My hair's pretty thick, so if I do one braid, it's pretty chunky. And if you have straight styles, you want it to lay flat, so that way you can't really tell. There's a big poof in the back of your head. Um, so what I do to get past that is I actually um, go ahead and section my hair off and I um, comb, sorry, I braid it. So I'm going to do that. I don't really care um, where I section them. So this is a typical section. Um, it's not too big, but not too small, and we're putting a little bit of water for the back it's going to dry, just so it's easier to manipulate. I usually, I don't comb it out because I don't care to, but I'm combing it out this time because I am going to wear 
this for a little minute. Because when you take it out, more than likely, well for me, every time I take mine out, I wash it. So, go ahead and braid it up. And you're going to do this for all of your head. But when you get closest to where we have the leave out, which is the sections that I have separated, there's a little trick. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to come back when I'm closest to my leave out. Okay guys, so I am back. I have braided most of my hair. I'm going to show you back how it looks. Very simple. I don't think too fussy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comb roll it once I have everything together. So this is the part that I kind of wanted to let you guys know about. So this is very important as far as securing your hair. All of the wigs will have, um, well the wigs that I make, have wig clips where it's not just a um, kind of like a comb that goes through your hair. It's actually a clip that goes quick and I'll show you guys what that is. But there's certain areas on which the wig clips are situated for different reasons. One of them will be here and it'll slide in this way and then click. And then there'll be another one usually like about here and a slide and click. And then there'll be another one down here and a slide and click. Um, so these parts right here, don't mind that that's what I mean. These parts over here, I like to make sure that they're extra secure. And how I do that is I create a braid of which um, the clips actually sit on. So I try to make it in a way that it's wide enough but yet loose enough that the um, the the wig clip actually slides into the braid and then it's, it's secured onto the braid. So it's not secured onto the bigger braids which I have here. I'll incorporate this braid into that braid. So I'm just braiding it as you can see here. Don't necessarily have to braid it all the way because all you need is to make sure that there's some sort of separation because again it'll go in. The tighter you do it the better. But I've learned, I've actually put, um, <clears throat> sometimes, depending on your hair, I've put um, rubber bands here instead of actually braiding it, and it also works too. The only thing is the tension on your hair can kind of hurt you after a while. So depending on, you know, whether your hair is thick enough or if you've done it in the past, it works or not, you know, you can do that too. So what then I do after that is I do another braid, usually a really long braid or sorry, a really long section, which the clip can go, because sometimes, depending on the wigs, um, they sit, are situated in different parts of um, the wig. So some are in the front, like closer to the top here, some are in the middle here, some are really low, it just depends. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and braid this part. And you're gonna do that for the other side as well. Um, there is a clip that goes at the bottom of the U, which would be here, which um, is, um, it's, I mean, you don't necessarily need to do it. I just do that so the, you know, the hair doesn't necessarily flat up. Um, you shouldn't have a problem with, you know, that, that section there. Um, so you're gonna do some, something just like this. We're gonna have it secured um, with the braid here and here. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The braid doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be super tight. I don't you shouldn't make it super tight because you don't want it to be where you can't get um, the hair secured underneath it. Well you could um where you can't get the clip, the way clip underneath it. or put this braid into the other bigger braids. So. Now, once you have all of this done, there's different variations. You don't necessarily have to do like, you know, how I have the bigger chunky braids. Um, you could do, you can just put it in the bun if it works, but your hair's too short. Um, you can just put it in a, you know, a ponytail in the back. You know, make sure that your hair is somewhat um, slicked back, you know, as best possible. So that way you don't, 
it doesn't look weird. Um, yeah, so you can just make sure your hair is slicked back. Um, I will tell you guys this. In my photos, you'll see a lot of the older photos, at least. I used this when I was transitioning a lot. I mean, have as much hair as I have now. Uh, this is about my normal length. I'm trying to give it a little bit longer than this, but for the most part, this is basically how, how long my hair naturally grows, or how it's grown in the past before I, I cut it, because I cut it back in 2012. The end of 2012, I cut my hair um, really, really short due to damage, oh, well it's not that deep damage, it was because my hair was blonde and, and I was straight and like crazy and so with that hair color which my hair does not like and I will no longer be doing it, I only do it now in my wig, um, I can make that um so I, it, it had a lot of damage, it was thinning a lot in my hair, like I said it's usually really thick, so you know I dyed it by dark and then I um, actually put it so that way I didn't have to worry about like the thinner ends and stuff like that so I was growing it out but I prefer longer hair all of my wigs are long for the most part or they started out that way and then ended up being short so you're gonna just side note you're gonna be braiding these with the bigger braids um, which you see me doing now I just don't want to you know sit here and Great. Well, I'm not saying anything when you guys are just watching. So, <laughs> information as I do things. Um, so yeah, we're going to then break it all up. But basically, when I had my hair short, I really, really like think that the longest point was like this long. It really wasn't that long at all. Um, <clears throat> I would wear weave, but I would do like a, almost like a halfway. So my hair would be out in the front, and then. Um, my hair would be out in the front and then the back was put up but because my hair wasn't long enough it just didn't look right so I had to find other ways to do it so a lot of times when you see me with the wigs I'll show you how it looks but you'll see that my hair is um, the sides are like twisted up within the wig and pinned backwards so a lot of the photos you see like that and it's because my hair was too short and I couldn't leave it out as I um, wore the wig now I can do that because my my hair has grown a lot so I can blend it in a little bit better but this is for people who have shorter hair who you know are kind of hesitant about doing it I love that style because I think I, I thought it was was very natural because I always made sure it was a hair color that was closest to mine um, and then it gave me a little flexibility because I could wear textures that necessarily uh, match mine so I didn't blow out my hair whenever I did this. Actually, I lied, sorry. I did blow out my hair like I blow dried it, but I didn't um, flat iron it because I didn't want um, heat damage on it. So what I would usually do is I would um, blow it out so that way it was poofy, but I, you know, gelled at the edge or used jam of some sort, stuff like that, and I secured it in a way that it didn't matter, again, my, my hair texture, the hair would still work perfectly with, um, with my leave out so I didn't have a problem with that so I really I abused that style for a long time because I needed my hair to grow out and I got really really tired of having it short or curly I couldn't even put it in a ponytail you know I had to leave it in a fro and mm, after a while it's not gonna work out and it was too short to grip to do you know twist outs or braid outs or anything like that hated that never mm, no never again never cutting it that short again um, second time I actually cut it short, I had to cut it short like that before because I decided to cut my own hair and that was dumb because I tried to cut it like a Rihanna cut and that was dumb. Okay, so now that you have your Felicia braids, because that's exactly what they are right now, um, all the way around, this is what's going to be underneath your wig. So what I do here, it's a little bit easier to pull it a little bit. Okay, 
if it's a little loose, it's, it's totally fine because you're going to then um, put a, um, a scrunchie so that way you don't have to actually secure all the ends or anything like that. You can if you want, just so that, you know, you're not falling out there. If you have shorter hair, yeah, I would, I would, I've done it where I've actually um, rubber bands my hair, so in boxes, I rubber band them, and then make rubber band into a box and connect it and connect it and connect it so that way it would do that. That's definitely an option. Um, so now you have it like this. Um, so what you're going to do is, doesn't frizz up or go crazy because I use some sort of leave-in conditioner to kind of keep it all together. So now, after this is like a breeze, <laughs> you have your leave out on either side. You can now either put on your wig or you can um, work on your, your leave out. I usually work on my leave out so when it comes time to blend, it's super, super fast, super, super easy. Okay guys, so this is my hair blow dried and flat ironed. I'll do another video on how I flat iron my hair or how I blow dry my hair, but I'm using sunlight right now and the sun is about to go down. It is 8 or 7 here in Miami, it goes down about 8.30, so I'm pressed for time. Um, so basically, this is my hair. This is the leave out, this is the part that everyone's going to see. And I mean, you can part it in different ways if you want because, you know, I have a generous amount out. This is the side, so you can't tell. I'm going to put on the wig now so you can see. This is the wig. Um, okay, it's not detangled. So, let me get my brush. This is um, the wig that I purchased. Ooh, I don't know, like maybe almost a year ago or so. Um, and it's a U part. Um, I wouldn't recommend this hair. <laughs> um, it, the quality is not all that great. It sheds like a mother. Um, but I do like the length. I think the length is like length is a 22. And I didn't really cut any of the hair. Right now it's kind of wavy. I actually flat ironed it, but it's because it was in a bun, so that's what affected it. So you're gonna move your leave out to the front, so that way you can put on your wig. So put it to the front. What you're gonna do? Is do a little bit of the construction of the wig. So all the hair is sewn onto a wig cap, which is. Mesh, I use mesh and not a dome cap. A lot of people use a dome cap because, I don't know, it feels more snug, so more secure. My hair um, doesn't do well when there's no circulation. Um, so I like to, for it to breathe and it's, and it's much easier when, for me when I, when I um, sew them on. And then you're gonna have um, your wig clips, which clip, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. But um, they clip and you can secure them in. So this is the one, this is the one that's gonna go here, and then there's one here, which is this one. The one that goes a little bit farther. I always put one in the back. I don't have any additional straps because the, the wig cap actually fits perfect for me, so I don't need to. Um, and then clips on the other side, and then also one in the middle. So I'm gonna unclip this and I'm gonna throw it on. So yeah, oh, and I'll show you guys the sewing pattern too. So, I usually start with one side first. W meanwhile, I have the back underneath my hair. So, you got one clip 
which is the side you want to put that as far as you can to the front. And then you have the other side. Flip it in. You can always adjust these, which I think is awesome. Clip it up. Clip, clip, clip it up. And then you have the top. You can just slide it in, clip it up. And then you have the other side. Slide, clip it up. Then on the side. You're gonna take this side, slide it in, flip it up. You see, that's why I have the braid, so it has something to hold on to when you are clipping it up. So now that everything's clipped up in the back, you're then slide that up, flip it up. That's basically it. So your wig is on. It's very secure. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to lift up either, which I like. Um, hair everywhere. So, This is your wig. So you have your natural um, scalp out, and you can part a little bit more, especially if you do a chunky, you know, kind of leave out, get a little bit more room. You have your sides out. Now, when you're doing updos with this, I would just highly, highly suggest, depending on, you know, the wig and stuff like that, to be careful. Because that's the worst part. Sometimes, like for me, I leave a little, little piece. Probably leave a little bit more. Sorry about this pimple. This is just gross. I don't know what the hell, where the hell that came from. But anyways, it's a fact of life. Um, yeah. So that's basically your side, and then your back. Um, this is the back. This is the top. I think again. This is the top. Yeah, 